Hi Singapore, this is Valtteri Bottas from Williams Martini Racing, supported by Randstad, and you are listening to 938 Live Sports. From 938 Live, this is Formula One driver Fernando Alonso. Hi Singapore, I'm Jürgen Klinsmann. Hi, I'm Martin Tyler. This is Annika Sorenstein. Hi Singapore, this is Johnny Wilkinson. You're locked on to the best, best in sports. sports. Cheers. You're listening to Singapore's longest-running and only sports talk show on radio, 16 years and still going strong. A good Saturday to you and welcome to Sports Zone on 93 Live. I'm Raj Kumar and today we count down to the 2014 Formula One Singapore Airlines Singapore Grand Prix. And joining me as my co-host for this preview show is my colleague Noah Tan. Thanks Raj and what a star-studded show we have lined up for you today because mm-hmm. not only are we going to hear from at least 10 of the current Formula 1 drivers which is almost half of them on the starting grid we'll also be talking to Alex Young who used to compete in F1 and he's now a presenter come analyst for the Formula 1 live shows on Fox Sports That's right Alex will join us on the phone in just a few minutes and he'll be telling us about the action that transpired in last night's first two practice sessions at the Marina Bay Street Circuit and later on the show you'll be hearing from the likes of Nico Rosberg Lewis Hamilton Sergio Perez Kimi Raikkonen Jensen Button and several more Plus, we will also begin, be giving away two copies of the F1 2014 video game for the PS3 console. The game is only being released in about four weeks' time, but our kind friends from Bandai Namco Singapore are giving uh, the chance for two of you to win uh, to win and reserve a copy for yourself. So all you have to do is to answer a simple question later in the show during our phone-in contest, or you can go online right now and check out the website for more details about the game, which is on www formula one hyphen game.com slash us that's formula one hyphen game.com slash us excellent stuff and but more about this exciting game later on the show for now it's time to hear from our first f1 driver on the show and i had the chance to speak to williams driver valtteri bottas in a one-on-one interview he was at an at an event organized by Renstad, which is one of the williams team sponsors and I spoke to him for about seven minutes on a number of issues. I first started by asking him about this current campaign, which has seen the 25-year-old from Finland already clinch four podium finishes. So here's Valtteri Bottas. I mean, it's been a really good season uh, so far. And uh, I have to say that the target we set, set ourselves in the beginning of the season, we've, we've actually exceeded it. So, uh, you know, we, we really aim to be much better than last year, as last year was really... Really difficult season for us as a team, but uh, yeah, now we've made some some big improvements and we've got some quite big results. So it's uh, all going into the right direction. So taking into account your uh, current results, what's your new target for the rest of the season? I think we need to, as a team, we need to keep scoring really good points consistently and keep getting on the podium. Um, so that's the goal for the rest of the season. And, uh, you know, if we can secure the third place in the Constructor Championship. So uh, we are now just from the Ferrari and we really need to try and keep keep the lead against them. So that's our target for the rest of the season. OK, and uh, are you truly happy with the FW36 this season or do you suppose with um, six more races to go you can achieve even better results with the car? Well, you, you never get, can be too, too happy. You know, there's always things you can improve and... Uh, like uh, the team Mercedes is a really good example. You know they are still dominating all the races, and uh, so we we have work to do. And we have some some updates coming to the car, mainly like aerodynamic uh, parts. Some for here in in Singapore, and some um, in Suzuka later on. So uh, yeah, we still aim to be in a stronger position in the end of the year than we were in the beginning. So. Uh, but you know, then the next challenge is designing the new car and uh, aiming a- another further improvements for next year. This is your first season together with Felipe Massa, and he's just been awarded another year extension with Williams. So, looking at some of the teams and drivers, how important is teamwork for you in your professional career? In Formula One, teamwork is is everything. It's uh, you know, you can't be just individual. You can't be only the driver and then separately the team you know it's completely teamwork and the, all the improvements uh, to make them it, it needs a lot of cooperation from everyone in the team uh, the driver engineers the engineers mechanics uh, the whole race team 
and uh, with with all the people at the factory back in England so uh, you know that uh, it is a real team effort you know Williams has more than 500 people and every single person is very important and what about Massa being such an experienced driver has his experience helped you at all yeah definitely I mean it's really good to have Felipe as a teammate he's got a lot of experience from a team a big team like Ferrari so that's uh, that's good for us and he's a nice guy and the work together with us has been really good and of course you're only 25 this year and Finland has produced some great F1 champions for example uh, Mika Haikinen and Kimi Raikkonen was racing in uh, Ferrari at the moment so how long do you foresee yourself taking to become world champion? Well, I hope rather sooner than later. I mean, that's the that's the goal, and that's always been my target anyway, and that's um, what I'm really pushing for, and we are pushing for as a team. So that's why I also I'm really happy to stay with this team for for next year because our you know our target is there. But you know, I, I'm still you know I I feel like I have still plenty of time in Formula One. You know, if it's not next year, it, it can be year after. We are working for that together as a team. Speaking of champions, are you surprised to see the defending champion Sebastian Vettel, four-time defending champion, this year struggling with the car? He has not won a single race in 2014. I have to say that, yeah, a little bit. It's uh, it's, it's quite surprising. And uh, I knew that uh, Daniel Ricciardo, his teammate, is a really good driver. But uh, I think, you know, he's surprised a lot of people. And uh, possibly, you know, the new cars just somehow... Sebastian hasn't really got um, a handle of it, so. Um, but I'm, I'm sure, you know, as a many-time world champion, he will find a way, and uh, I'm sure he's, like he's already shown in the last couple of races, he's uh, capable for, for good results, and uh, so for sure he, he will be back. And uh, let's talk a bit about the recent rule changes. Teams are now unable to advise drivers during races, so warnings about issues like fuel consumption or brake wear during the race is out. So, what are your thoughts on those uh, rule changes? I think it's it's quite a big change in the middle of the season. You know, it's uh, from all the teams, no one prepared f- for this. Uh, but in the end, now it's going to be the same for everyone. It is going to be a big challenge. I think it's going to be more down to the driver. Like uh, good examples are the, you know, the engine modes, uh, how much you know, you know energy you're going to use from the electric battery and you're not getting that much info from the team so it's a lot about the driver to really keep up together with the car you don't know exactly how much more you have power left and or how much you have fuel and um example bef- before the race start you know all the settings with the clutch for the for the start all these things now it's going to be just down to the driver and uh, so yeah it, it's surprising but uh, it's going to be a nice challenge but do you think it's fair for them to have implemented this rule change in the middle of the season? Yeah, for me to judge if it's fair or not, yeah, I'm not really in a position really to say that. Oh, for me, yeah, I can only say it's quite surprising. And um, I'm sure everyone is a bit surprised. So, But uh, the good thing in the end, it's the same for, for everyone. Just before you go, let's talk a bit about the Singapore night race and uh, the Marina Bay circuit. This is your second night race, I believe. What are your thoughts of the circuit and your expectations this weekend? It's one of the most challenging circuits, for sure, in, in the calendar. And uh, because it's a night race and because of the layout of the track, you know, there's a lot of corners, a lot of uh, uh, narrow places. And the wall, um, in most of the corners, the walls are really close. So... You can't really afford any mistakes, and it's a long race. It's a two-hour race, uh, very hot and humid, and uh, very physical, and very demanding for the cars also. You know, with it, all the temperature, with the brakes and engine, it's going to be critical. So it, it's a great challenge, but I really, really enjoy it. Last last year when I drove my first race here, I really enjoyed it, and uh, really looking forward to this this one. Without revealing too much, is there a particular strategy you're planning to employ in this race? I mean. Yeah, we always have some kind of plan when we come to a race um, about what we can achieve and how we can achieve it. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you too many details. All, all I can tell that we are going to do everything we can to, again, get really good points with, with both cars. And there was Williams Formula 1 driver Valtteri Botha speaking to Noah Tan. Of course, Noah, he didn't want to tell you the strategy. <laughs> <laughs> good try, though. And uh, so <laughs> what was it like interviewing your very first Formula 1 driver since you came on board with 9-3 Live almost uh, 18 months ago? 
Well, uh, it was a fantastic experience, of course. Uh, Valtteri was one of the... I mean, he's very humble, very nice, mm. down-to-earth, like most of the drivers. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he speaks quite fluently as well. Yeah. You know, I spoke to him before the actual interview. You know, had a quick chit-chat. Uh, seems a very nice guy. Mm. So, completely at ease. Yep. Uh, quite an easy interview to conduct. So, yeah. And with four podium finishes, I tell you, this is one guy to watch, especially from Finland. And exactly. You, you a did potential mention, world yeah. champion. Thankfully, he doesn't mumble by Kimi Raikkonen. <laughs> You're listening to Sports Zone on 93 Live, and today we count down to the 2014 Singapore Night Race. You just heard from my colleague Noah Tan speaking to Williams driver Valtteri Bothas. All right, then, time to talk about what transpired in practice one and two last night at Marina Bay. And we are delighted to speak to one of our dear friends of 93 Live as Alex Jung joins us live on the phone right now. Alex, of course, is synonymous with racing for Malaysia and in Formula One as well, and he's now of a renowned Fox Sports presenter, analyst, commentator, event host. He's doing it all, man. Hey, Alex, welcome back to Sports Zone on 9th Rate Live. Hey, guys. Good to be on. Uh, <laughs> let's start by asking you about uh, the practice one and two. I mean, were you surprised that, you know, after six races, this is the first time that uh, that, uh, that the Ferrari car has, has beaten uh, the, the Mercedes duo of Hamilton and Nico Rosberg to at least uh, finish at the top of practice? Uh, we're talking about, of course, uh, Fernando Alonso. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Fernando Alonso. You know, you can never you can never discount him. Like guy, the guy's always going very, very strong. Uh, the Ferraris, you know, it's not really a, a competitive car this this year. But um, you know, he was quickest in free practice one. He was second quickest in free practice two. Um, we shouldn't read too much into it because you know Ferrari do tend to run quite light on Friday, and then we see Saturday, Sunday maybe not so competitive. But, um, you know, Fernando always brings something a little bit special to Singapore. You know, he, he is quite good here. He has won the race here twice before. So um, I, I'm not really sure if Kimi will be there. But I think uh, Fernando, while he might not be in the hunt for the win, he'll definitely be in the hunt for the last podium position. Hi, Alex. This is Noah. And turning to the issue of Bernie Eccleston's idea of betting the radio communications between the teams and drivers while racing, how much of that did you see happening last night in P1 and P2? Well, um, a little bit of it. You know, I can see some teams a bit cagey about what to say. Um, but I, I think mostly they're very unsure still about what can be said and what can't be said. Um, you know, there's a long list of things that, uh, outlining what could be said and what can't be said. And, and a lot of grey areas, you know. Um, and I, I find it that it's going to be very difficult to police. Because uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all that come the race, uh, drivers and engineers will have worked on some sort of code words or not maybe not code words, but just a way of phrasing things even to try and um, let let each other know the severity of what's happening on with the car. So it's going to be hard to police, you know, I think. Uh, and, and really, I'm not really sure how it's going to how it's going to affect things at all. I mean, there, there are some drivers, like like you mentioned, Kimi Raikkonen earlier on, you know, he, he's not known for talking. I don't really think this ban is going to or this restriction of uh, information is really going to hurt him at all. And, uh, but what about yourself? If you were still driving today, would you be in favour of the rules or would you be against them? Uh, I've always been quite a comfortable talking on the radio. So uh, I, think it would be, I think I would have used the radio communications very well. So I, th- I don't think I would have been in favour of it because it probably would have hurt me a bit. <laughs> Now, Alex, looking ahead to the night race tomorrow, Mercedes have never won or even podiumed at the Marina Bay Street Circuit, but with, with uh, Lewis and Nico in dominant form in 2014, can they break that hoodoo uh, tomorrow night? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, that Mercedes car is quite a bit better than any other car on the grid. And, you know, Hamilton's an ex-world champion and Ross Book's such a good driver. They're, they're both driving at very high levels. So with everything being equal, you should still see those guys still occupying position one and position two. But um, and and I think they 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 you know they're, they're so focused on the title by I, I, title fight. I don't see them slipping up. So I, I think they will be the favourites for that positions. But like I said earlier, you know it's it's a track which is very very tricky to drive. It's the sort of track where a driver can make a special difference. Someone like Fernando Alonso, or, or, or even uh, Sebastian Vettel. Don't forget Sebastian Vettel's won here the last three years. And if Vettel's going strong, then you know Ricardo's going to be going strong as well. I mean Ricardo's been one of the standout drivers of the season so far. Uh, you you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, we were talking about we were going to talk about battle, but uh, like you said, he's won here three in a row. Do you even expect him to put up a challenge tomorrow, given the season yeah. that he's had in 2014? I think so. I mean, he's had he's had a lot of bad luck this year. You know, a lot of reliability issues have compromised his races, um, and, and he was looking for a little bit of form as well. You know, I mean, I, I don't think he's adapted to the new rules 
uh, the new cars as well as uh, his teammate has. But uh, I have seen signs over the last few races that he's turning that around. Uh, and I'd be very surprised to see uh, if Vettel wasn't in the hunt uh, for the top three position in qualifying today. Now, every year we've talked about this, but it has never happened on race night. I'm talking about the rain, of course. Do you think it will be clear skies tomorrow as well? And uh, how do you think, how will the rain impact the race on a circuit like the Marina Bay circuit, especially at night? Yeah, I, you never know, right? It's the tropics. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it will be clear skies. Um, you know, but you know, Singapore's done such a great, dra- uh, great job with the track, with the lighting as well, and of course the drainage, that if it did rain, I don't think it'd be too big a problem, actually. Okay, now, Alex, I understand you and Paula will be broadcasting your show live tomorrow from the Marina Bay Sands. Tell us a bit about, uh, tell us a bit more about that. Well, yeah, it's quite exciting. It's our first time we're having a studio outside of the, outside of our home studio, shall we say. So, at MBS, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, you guys want to come down and say hi, please, you know, come join us. We'll be there from pretty much uh, 6.30, I guess. Or Actually, no, we're going to be there from just after lunch, basically prepping and seeing how the studio works and stuff. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be fun to have it in a different environment. Um, and then, of course, don't forget about today. You know, we've got free practice three. That's going to be going on at about 6 o'clock today. And then uh, qualifying will be, you know, catch us, catch us on Fox Sports 3 uh, at 9 o'clock. Now, Alex, uh, just before you go, I know we've uh, not been through even qualifying as yet, but uh, what does your gut instincts tell you? I mean, in the last six editions, four of the pole sitters have gone on to win the race. Uh, so what do you think of uh, the checkered flag tomorrow night? I think <laughs> I think one of the Mercedes boys will win. I think the other one... Actually, I think that the, the pressure is starting to get ramped up quite a bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see if... Uh, uh, I, I think we'll see two Mercedes on the podium. But I think they're going to get split by someone. I got a feeling, you know, someone like an Alonso or Vettel, and 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 I also include Ricardo in this. Um, you know, they're they're such standout drivers that they they always bring something special here, and I can see them doing something quite well. Um, and um, it just needs one small mistake from one of the Mercedes boys, and 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 those guys will be into second position. So I, I think it'll be a one-three for them, uh, with the second spot filled up by either a Ferrari or a Red Bull. Okay, on that note, Alex, uh, thanks very much for speaking to us on 93 Alive. Uh, let's have a great race tomorrow, and, uh, and you have a great broadcast as well from the MBS. Thanks, guys. I'll see you, see you there, hopefully. Cheers. Uh, and there was uh, Alex Young, who is a presenter and analyst for Fox Sports, and uh, you can watch him together with Paula Malai Ali on Fox Sports 3, which is Mio TV's channel 116, and, uh, and on StarHub's channel 120. Uh, you can watch them both this evening from 5.45pm onwards for Practice 3. That's followed by the qualifying session at 8.45pm. And of course, tomorrow evening from 6.30pm onwards, uh, uh, live on Mio's channel 116 or StarHub's channel 120. And if you don't have cable, you can also watch tonight's qualifying session and tomorrow's main race on MediaCorp's channel 5. 93 Live, of course, will be uh, reporting live uh, from the qualifying session as well as the main race uh, during the bulletins uh, you know, in the respective hours. All right, then. It's time for the news headlines, but when we return, it's your chance to win a copy of the brand new F1 2014 video game for the PS3 console. You'll also hear from several F1 drivers on a host of issues, so stick around to Sport Zone or 938 Live. Hi, everyone. I'm Nico Rosberg, Formula One race driver, and you're listening to the guys on Sports Zone on 938 Live Sports. You're listening to Sports Zone on 93 Live, and today we count down to the 2014 Singapore Night Race. And earlier in the show, you heard from Malaysia's former Formula One driver Alex Young, along with our exclusive interview with Williams driver Valtteri Bottas, who spoke to my colleague Noah Tan. Thanks, Raj. And just before we hear from the other drivers, it's time to give away the F1 2014 video game for the PS3 console. Published by Codemasters and Bandai Namco, and soon to be released in four weeks, we have two copies to be given away on today's show, so you can win the game today, but only collect it one month later. That's right. Uh, we're giving you the chance to reserve the copy, uh, so to speak, and this is the best uh, 
racing game out in the market or soon to be out in the market. It's being released for the PS3 first and then for probably the PS4 and the Xbox One later next year. Uh, this, in this particular version, you'll see uh, two new venues and added into the Formula One circuit that includes Sochi and of course uh, Spielberg and other changes in the game include Bahrain being run as a night race for the first time and incorporating the rule changes made at the start of the season, which means uh, the new turbocharged cars uh, with the refined handling characteristics uh, characteristics so it's going to be really interesting for you if you're uh, a fan of uh, driving games and uh, all you have to do uh, you know because we're looking for two lucky winners and the contest question uh, for you to call us is uh, at six six nine one one nine three eight is answer just provide us the answer to this question if you were to include this year how many times has Singapore hosted the night race? If you were to include this year, how many times has Singapore hosted the night race? Call us now at 66911938. That's 66911938. In the meantime, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Bernie Eccleston's idea of banning the radio comms between the teams and drivers while racing. It's to allow for the drivers to use his skills and knowledge as opposed to appearing as puppets for the engineers. So the Singapore Grand Prix is the first to have teams observing the rules, although the rules were amended last night. We'll get to that in just a while. But here are some of the comments from the drivers, which we heard over the last two or three days before the amendment of the rules. So starting first, let's hear from Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen. Well, obviously we don't speak a lot in the radio in my case, but uh, um, usually when, when uh, there's no issues, you know, but obviously... It might get quite complicated if if there's some problems with the car and you have to change certain things to to try to finish the race. So uh, I don't know how the rule goes on those those times, but uh, actually makes it uh, more complicated for us. But uh, you know, it's uh, it's a part of the game, so it's okay. And uh, that was Kimi Raikkonen. Let's hear now from McLaren driver Kevin Magnussen. Followed. Uh, you know, followed by a rookie driver in Marcus Ericsson for the Caterham team on the issue of radio communications. It's interesting. We still I think we still need to sort of fully understand what what we can say and what we can't say. So um, it will definitely uh, leave us up to ourselves a bit more, and we need to know uh, exactly what to do with the power unit and and everything. So I don't think it's going to ch- uh, change too much, really. It's 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 just uh, a different way to uh, to go about the race, really. I, I like the idea, to be honest. I think it's, it's good to get the drivers more in focus. So I think it's good. It's just for us as a small team, I think it's a bit more trickier because our steering wheel, we don't have a big display. So I think some, like a lot of the other teams have a big display so they can show a lot of stuff on, the, on this, whereas we have a very small one. So it will be a bit more tricky, but yeah, like I said, I like the idea and I think it's good to, to make us drivers a bit more in, in focus. And weighing in with his thoughts is the current World Championship leader, Nico Rosberg. What's new for this weekend is that uh, Bernie Ecclestone has decided the team is not allowed to tell us anything anymore, which can help us. So now it's like very, very different. We're completely out there on our own. We need to make our own decisions, and, and that's going to be quite a big challenge, you know, because there used to be so many things that they were telling us to change the switch here, consume less fuel, do this, do that, and now it's just on our own. Uh, so that's going to be really, really interesting, and uh, maybe it, I think it's going to make the racing better, and just it's more pure racing, you know, and that's good. I really like that. Well, Noah, it seems in general, uh, you know, the drivers are looking forward to less comms with the teams while racing and uh, this will be put to the real test I guess uh, with the actual race tomorrow yeah, exactly, uh, because yeah. during practice there's only so much uh, they were not really under real pressure but come race night tomorrow you know everything is on the cards and uh, uh, before we proceed further uh, we have our two winners uh, we asked you earlier if you were to include this year how many times has Singapore hosted uh, the night race of course it's seven Singapore first started in 2008. Our two winners are Ang Sui Leong and Lee Chai Hong. Sui Leong and Chai Hong, congratulations. You both won for yourself a copy of the F1 2014 video game for the PS3 console. It's published by Codemasters and Bandai Namco and uh, it's soon to be released in Singapore in four weeks. And for more details about this exciting new racing game, you can check out the website which is www.formula1-game.com. Dot com slash us. That's Formula One hyphen game dot com slash us. Okay, and let's continue to just yesterday evening during the free practice. Uh, before the free practice, actually, the FIA announced that the new rules regarding radio radio comms have been put on hold. And this was after certain feedback from the drivers and the teams. Some felt it wasn't fair to implement the new rules at this point in the season, and some cars had an advantage if the rules were in place. 
And uh, yesterday evening, just before 5pm, it was announced that the rules regarding advising the driver on his performance will remain, but advised on how the car is doing during the race, that rule will only take place next season in 2015. So from the initial list of 50 banned messages is now down to under 20 and following last night's practice sessions there was a media conference with a few of the team owners. Let's hear now from Vijay Malaya who owns the Force India team. You know the FI rule has always existed that a driver should drive unaided but despite that rule being in existence teams have taken pit wall to car communication to a certain level and now we have been asked to pull back. It almost suggests that we have been abusing the regulation in one form or another. You know, this is not PlayStation. I mean, whatever you may say from the pit wall, the amount of influence it actually has on the driver, on the excitement of the race and the race result is something that is highly debatable. But then the FIA makes the rules and it's the obligation of every team to abide by those rules. So I guess we will abide by the rules that were fortunately clarified to a more practical extent this morning. And echoing his sentiments was Eric Boulier, who's the race director of the McLaren team. Yeah, I mean, we uh, obviously we had some different message uh, internally uh, <laughs> during the both three practices, like uh, shall we say this or shall we not say that? So we had to police a little bit or monitor what we wanted to say. But um, at the end, I think most have been said by my colleagues. And uh, the only thing uh, which I think was worrying a little bit is to change the regulation during the course of the season, which is never, never nice things to do. Uh, even if we obviously listen the fans, and obviously respect uh, the position of the FIA. Uh, happy as well that uh, obviously they clarified a little bit what can be said and not. And obviously happy that we can still say or s- deliver some message, as you said, about safety and, and obviously uh, reliability for the cars. And those were the latest sound bites from the team surrounding the amended rules regarding team radio comms. But let's move on now and hear from more F1 drivers, starting first with Pasta Maldonado. He's with the Lotus team now, but two years ago when he was with Williams, he was in the front row on the starting grid at the night race. Well, here's Pasta speaking ahead of his chances tomorrow. Qualifying pace is always uh, a bit tricky for us. But during the race, for any reason, we are able to to recover uh, the pace and sometimes uh, we are uh, much more competitive so hopefully here we can be a bit more competitive than than Monza for sure but it's difficult to, to say something before we get in the car. And also talking about his season was Mercedes star Lewis Hamilton. You know this season's been incredible for this team you know to be here in Singapore, I was so excited for this trip. You know, this this beginning of this last phase of uh, series of races is just so exciting. And to start in Singapore is such a beautiful place. It's unbelievable. Firstly, how big the place is, and just um, everything's so new, and the quality and the design is is fantastic. So, it's probably one of the one of the very few places that I travel to during the year where I feel like I can live. You know, so if I had time, I'd come and live here if it wasn't so far away from from Europe. But um, yeah, I mean, and the circuit is just incredible. Um, it's a bit difficult when we get here because we, are, we stay on European time. Or I stay on European time. I don't know how everyone else does. But um, So this morning, you wake up around 1, uh, 1 p.m., you go to bed at like 5 um, a.m. So it's really it's strange in the evening because when I have lunch, everyone's having dinner. And then, you know, every, the gym's closed at, you know, 10, 10 o'clock. So when I want to go to the gym, it's closed. It's very, very, very strange but really enjoy this race and the fans here have been amazing every year have come the circuit's fantastic and and the support we have here is amazing so thank you compared to london with the weather how do you guys cope with the heat in the uh, in the driver's cab this is one of the hardest circuits um hardest races there's two malaysia and here um simply because it's just so hot man i mean the under the clothing what we have is like um it's all fireproof but if you have long sleeve underwear on long sleeve uh, kind of pants and then a uh, top, balaclava, and then the suit on top of that, which is another three layers, and, and then gloves. And it's like, then you go in a sauna. And here, when you, even if you open your visor a little bit, there's, there's no cool breeze coming in. So it's, you know, you're sweating before you even get in the car. And so here you just have to, um, you know, for example, today, this morning, gone for a, a good run this morning, 
and just sweating it out, getting your body used to it. Um, you can go into, uh, go into the sauna just to get your body working and, um, again, just making sure you're drinking plenty. So this weekend, I've got my trainer here and he just con- is constantly being a pain and giving me a bottle to make sure I'm drinking liquids. So. Lewis Hamilton there answering a question from the public when they were at Paragon Atrium on Thursday evening. And here's his teammate Rosberg talking about his season so far. You know, this season's been incredible for this team, you know, to be here in Singapore. I was so excited for this trip. You know, this, this beginning of this last phase of a uh, series of races is just so exciting. And to start in Singapore is such a beautiful place. It's unbelievable, firstly, how big the place is and just... Um, Everything's so new, and the quality and the design is, is fantastic. So it's probably one of, the, one of the very few places that I travel to during the year where I feel like I can live. You know? So if I had time, I'd come and live here if it wasn't so far away from, from Europe. But um, yeah, I mean, and the circuit is just incredible. Um, it's a bit difficult when we get here because we, are, we stay on European time. Or I stay on European time. I don't know how. We apologize. That was Lewis Hamilton. Uh, and we'll, we'll get to Nico Rosberg in just a minute. And I believe uh, we have Nico Rosberg right now. First of all, I'm really enjoying the season because it's, it's amazing and so, so, uh, I'm so lucky to have such a quick race car where you know, we're up at, at the front every single race, just so much quicker than everybody else. That's very, very special. So really enjoying that. And, um, and then, yeah, I was very lucky this year to be able to win. I have two home races, Monaco and the Hockenheim, and I won both of them. So it's been a fantastic season also from that point of view. And yeah, now it's, uh, it's a big fight with Lewis at the moment. You know, So there's six races to go. I'm sure it's going to be... Uh, very close. I hope that you enjoy the battle and, uh, and that we create some uh, exciting moments. And then, yeah, we'll see how it goes. You know, the uh, championship is very, very close. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to the next couple of races. Nico Rosberg. So no driver from Mercedes has ever reached the podium at the Singapore night race and all that could change tomorrow. And there's been a fierce battle between both drivers. And here's McLaren's Jensen Button with his thoughts uh, on the fierce rivalry because he says it's good for the sport. You know, you're always going to have rivalry in Formula 1. That's what it's all about. Even if the guys are best friends within a team, you know, there will be moments that you can pick out that you think, well, they are enemies. You know, that's always the thing. They've got the spotlight on them. It's non-stop. The camera's on those two guys. Every single change of, of, of a facial expression is, is taken as something. So um, they're under the spotlight. It's always difficult in that situation, but um, we'll see how they cope throughout the year. All right, time now for Traffic Watch. And when we return, we'll hear from a few more drivers in, uh, in, in uh, Sergio Perez and John Eric Verne. And if you're into video games, you probably want to stay on for an event which is happening in just four days' time. For now, though, it's time for Traffic Watch. Good day, Singapore. This is former Manchester United player Peter Schmeichel. And you're listening to the guys on 938 Live Sports. You're listening to Sports Zone on 93 Live, and we are down to the final stretch on this countdown to the 2014 night race. And, and uh, Noah, uh, yeah, before traffic watch, we we heard from Jensen Button and staying with the McLaren team, mm. Johnny Walker held an event together with the team in connection with their annual anti-drink and drive campaign. And I spoke to Upper Vichef, who is a managing director at Diageo, regarding their latest collaboration. Well, um, as you might know, Johnny Walker and McLaren have a nine-year partnership. At the heart of this partnership is our responsible drinking campaign where we reach out to fans uh, globally and encourage them never to drink and drive. In fact, this, this campaign has been very successful for us. A million people globally have signed up and made a pledge to never drink and drive. In Singapore, last year, 11,000 people made a similar pledge. So this year what we're doing is continuing on the success um, but we've also signed up with Uber as part of this campaign to give away 10,000 kilometers of free rides home. Now, we started this activity last weekend and it started on quite a high note because lots of Uber consumers not got to go home, not just in a safe way, but in a very stylish way as well, because we had uh, McLaren cars out on the road giving some of these Uber consumers uh, the opportunity to go home in McLaren cars. So that's our partnership with McLaren and, and Uber. This year is quite exciting because we've got 10,000 kilometers of safe rides home. We've got, as part of that, McLaren cars on the road, taking some lucky fans home. And we're also going to have, uh, this is a big surprise, Kevin McNewson himself driving one lucky fan home over this weekend. So watch the space. 
So how did this whole idea come about, giving away free rides, the partnership with Uber? How was it conceptualized? Yeah, uh, look, uh, responsible drinking is uh, has obviously been uh, an integral part of our campaign, the Johnny Walker campaign. And I believe it's very close to uh, the Uber values as well. So they believe in giving... Um, consumers, ensuring that consumers uh, don't drink and drive, and then giving them safe rides home. And therefore, it, the partnership was ideal. Also, two very progressive brands uh, growing worldwide. So it was a no-brainer. Just tell us a bit about how one can win a ride from uh, Kevin Magnuson. Well, what, what, what one has to do is basically... Um, make a pledge to never drink and drive uh, by posting a hashtag of I'm not driving either on our Facebook page or on Twitter or on the Uber app and you can be a lucky winner who can win the ride and and that was Upper Vijayath who is the who is the managing director at Diageo and uh, well let's move on to back to the F1 race itself again and uh, well, sharing with us his thoughts on the rest of the season is Toro Rosso driver John Eric Verne. While well, talking about this weekend and the, the rest of the the season, I really want to you know end up strongly the the season. Um, I think we should have had a lot more points with the with our team if we didn't have that much bad luck. But uh, you know, I think now it's behind. And um, yeah, I really want to make the best out of the last six races with Toro Rosso and then uh, find a, a good option for next year. And that's our preview of the Singapore night race plus the rest of the season. We certainly can tell you no other radio station in Singapore was able to do what we did in the last 45 minutes. We do apologize for one or two technical uh, errors, but uh, you know, you, you just heard from at least 15 team officials and drivers uh, that were recorded over the last uh, 48 hours. And just and uh, quickly, uh, Noah, who do you think is going to win? I think it's going to be the, one of the Mercedes drivers. Well, that's the safe assumption, but I'm yeah. hoping for uh, perhaps Fernando Alonso. To what, bring to a surprise. I mean, he looked really good on practice. Okay. Um, and just before we wrap up this edition of Sports Zone, for all you gaming fans, I'm sure you know that the Xbox One, after a 10th month delay, is finally being launched next Tuesday. I recently spoke to Hanson Yap, who's the marketing manager for Xbox Singapore, and I first asked him about the reasons for the 10th month delay. Uh, the dashboard for all countries, Singapore included, had to be customised. Uh, task there was en- a lot of engineering work that had to be done in the background to allow this and uh, that's why we have a, had a delay in the launch um, for Xbox in Singapore but I'm super happy it's finally landing on September 23rd but do you think the delayed launch might have allowed your competitors to gain an even stronger foothold in the, the current market uh, well, I think it's a great time to be a gamer now. There's so many uh, options, there's so many games. There are two Jenny consoles they can then pick from. Uh, what I understand is there are a lot of Xbox One fans, right, that is waiting in anticipation for this new console to finally come to Singapore. And I'm glad to announce that finally we're coming on September 23rd. Let's talk about the Xbox One. Maybe you could tell us uh, two features that are exclusive to the Xbox One that uh, it doesn't exist in any other gaming console in the market. If I had to pick just two, right? There are a lot of them, but if it's just two, uh, then I'll say it's the Kinect and our controller. Uh, number one, uh, our Kinect recognize, has biometric features that recognize you and will sign you in automatically to your account. And because of the capabilities of Kinect, there is a lot of gameplay that is possible, right? right? There will be more titles coming up in the future that would uh, take advantage of the capabilities of Kinect. Uh, we have Xbox Fitness, for example, that is able to read your heartbeat. Right? So I'm, I'm super excited to see what publishers will be able to come up next to take advantage of the capabilities of Connect. Uh, second thing is the controllers, right? There are over 40 new improvements on uh, the new Xbox One controller versus the previous 360 controllers. Uh, one of the key things that I love is called impulse trigger. Right? There are different rotors in the trigger versus uh, the right and left key buttons. So what happens is if you are playing a shooter game, for example, right, it would feel the feedback would feel different if you are shooting a uh, M16 machine gun versus a GPMG, for example. And that, that gives you a much more immersed gameplay and is so much more uh, realism to the game compared to the previous generation. I understand uh, the upcoming holiday season is going to be the biggest ever for Microsoft in terms of uh, the number of games that's going to be released. Uh, we're talking about at least 50 titles. Some of that includes uh, 
Forza Horizon 2. Right, so so many uh, uh, large titles of games that's coming on the new generation and they're all launching from now until holiday season. Um, so we're super excited, uh, super uh, keen to see what is the fans' reaction to the latest games. A quick word on the Halo Master Chief Edition. Right. Uh, Halo Master Chief Edition is something really our fans have been anticipating for. It's all the previous version of Halo 1 to 4, right? Uh, with 1 and 2 digitally remastered and all put on the new Gen 8 Xbox One platform, right? So this is a godsend for all Halo fans out there. And this is also the lead up to the new Halo 5 launch next year. Fans who play Halo Master Chief Edition, for example, will get exclusive access to the new Halo 5 beta coming up later this year. And they will also get access to uh, Halo Nightfall, which is a video series for the Halo franchise. Right, so this is going to be super exciting for the fans. You've been talking about September 23rd, September 23rd. So what, what exactly is going to happen in the Lion City on the 23rd of September? The biggest party that Xbox have ever seen in Singapore, baby. So what's going to happen in September 23rd is uh, anyone who has pre-ordered an Xbox One, you are invited to come down to Funan Mall at 1 p.m. in the afternoon to collect your pre-orders. Um, for fans who haven't pre-ordered, that's fine too. Come down, have a great time. We will have consoles set up with the latest titles ready for you to play. It's going to be one hell of a party. And that was Hanson Yap, the marketing manager for Xbox Singapore, talking about the big launch on the 23rd of September from 1pm onwards. That's for it. Uh, that's all we have time for this edition of Sports Zone. I'm the Rajman. And I'm Noah Tan. Take care and bye for now.